on a disc floating through space with a tiny sun. It probably has something to do with your stinger presets, bro. They can hear me, though. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the show that does the stupidity what these three people on the panel are doing to VMix right now. I just told uh, their street beer. Here. Yeah, we're getting some technical difficulties where it worked out, guys. Uh, bear with us. Um, big shout out to all the flat earthers out there that actually have updated technology so that we don't have to go through uh, hoops to get you on here just to show you how wrong you are. They can hear you. They can hear me. Yeah, they can hear you, Steve. How are you doing tonight, okay. sir? I'm tired as hell. Can you tell? Mm -hmm. Yes, I can. I could tell the moment I uh, the moment I heard you start speaking today i was like that doesn't sound like steve that sounds really? like almost dead steve <laughs> steve i'm really looking forward to this this is what i really okay. needed today all right uh, they can hear me now that's fine awesome hey guys Yay. <laughs> <Mazel tov. laughs> i'm ftfe welcome back to the channel does the stupidity what the board did to the majority of federation fleet at wall 3599 so today we have derek nelson with us who is a flat earther who i've come across on uh discord um, before we get into a discussion about the Flat Earth, um, Derek actually has some things that he would like to say about the current situation with uh, FE Corps. Uh, Derek, so um, what, what, what's the Flat Earthers uh, and your particular thoughts on what FE Corps are doing at the moment? Oh yeah, first of all, good evening everybody. Hope you're all doing good. Yeah, welcome and, to uh, the show, welcome to the show. FE Corps. Uh, yeah, I got some major bones with what they're doing because, uh, let's say in the United States, as far as like churches go, how they have a 501c3, uh, like you can promote the gospel there, but as far as like uh, cosmology type stuff, you are not allowed to go against the mainstream or they will take away your 501c3. And so it, it just uh, it begs to demand uh, if FE Core, if they're really trying to like promote flat earth at the end of the day what are they doing with a 501c3 it makes no sense i think it's quite obvious at this point that everything fe core are doing is is pretty illegal right I, yeah i mean uh if you really want to get nitpicky uh it's like they also did commit perjury, like while filing for their 501, or, or maybe not their 501c3, but like initially, like they said that there would be no members in their organization, which I mean, obviously there is. That's perjury. I don't even think at this point they they've even done their 5133 still still have they? Well, they applied for one. I know that, but whether if they get it or not, it's irrelevant because at the end of the day, if you know what they are. Uh, you know that it ultimately it ultimately means they will not go up like against mainstream science for like an all out debate or something like that. They won't do it. Yeah. So. Um, oh, no, it's like I mean, <laughs> so it's like uh, who are they misleading here? And in my opinion, flat earthers. So you think they're more misleading flat earthers than globe earthers? Well, I mean, that's just it's rather by default, really. Okay. Um, so, what is the the Flat Earth community's general thoughts about what has been going on with FE Core? Though, are, are they kind of mirroring? Well, see, your that's thoughts? the thing. I mean, it's like uh, like it's really split up right now because uh, I mean, you got like the main group where I mean they are really not saying anything, and anybody who does, it's like uh, you basically get ostracized. Okay. Um, FE Core in general, do 
you and other flat earthers, do you see them as part of the flat earth community or are they a completely separate entity that are just kind of doing their own thing? They are pretty much doing their own thing. And, uh, I mean, but for a while, I mean, it really seemed like that they could be like a voice for FV perhaps, but with what they're doing, it's, uh, it's ultimately, a, uh, a dead end. Okay. Um, Team Steve, uh, obviously both of you, welcome to the channel again. Uh, do you guys have any questions for Derek and the FE Core situation? I do. So with the FE Core situation, um, there's a couple things. One, it's not even the five hundred one c three. I I don't know if they applied for it or not, but it, it, they they obviously do have some board members. But my, my my biggest complaint is how they're going about filing the unlawful DC, DMCA's for copyright strikes on things that are not their copyright. Uh, that to me is one of the biggest ethical breaches that you could possibly uh, now dealt with some of them from FE Core, um, specifically Jaronism, who is a board member, by the way, uh, who's not the most uh, reputable person in the world. Let's just leave it at that. Uh, but, uh, you know, what's your take on FE Core filing, filing the false DMCAs and the false privacy com complaints, one of which they filed on one of my videos? which I fought, but uh, it's still annoying. But they complaint that uh, we had showed a about us page for FE Corp, which has all the membership information that's on their own webpage, and then said that was privacy consideration concern. So what do you think of the ethical <laughs> considerations for that? Derek? Hello? Derek? I'm sorry, I broke up for a second. <laughs> Corey. Um, Steve was asked asking you. Uh, let me say it backwards again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Steve was no, asking backwards. you what you think of the uh, the ethical um, situation with the the fact that FE Core are striking people with copyright and um, privacy complaints, and Steve has had one himself. Um, uh -huh. no, you know, so none of what they've done kind of falls under the right category for, for what they're doing. So, what's your thoughts on what FE Core are doing with the privacy and the copyright stuff? I don't agree with that either. <laughs> Yeah, it's good to hear oh, that um, good. other flat earthers are actually agree that what they're doing is wrong. Is that mm -hmm. the general consensus in, um, I mean, you obviously don't speak for all flat earthers, but I'm assuming you're part of a community of people that you talk to in general. Uh, do they kind of mm -hmm. mirror your thoughts on all this? Uh, the ones that I'm currently with, yes. Right. That's really good to hear mm -hmm. that, um, uh, you know, obviously I disagree with you fundamentally on things like the shape of the earth. But it is really good of to course. hear that flat earthers are angry about what FE Core are doing because it doesn't look good for flat earthers. I mean, it's it's making flat earth in general because flat because FE Core like see themselves as this like um, front run of of the flat earth movement. It's it reflecting bad on all of flat earth, and that must be pissing you off, right? Of course, yeah. I mean, because it's like at, I mean. If we can't be honest, there's a there's a big problem. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay, team, have you got any questions? Well, I, I yeah, I I don't think it's an honesty um, an honesty issue with FE Core. Um, I believe that they're. I believe you 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 got that quote almost almost right. You said if we can't be honest, uh, we can't be what? What did you say exactly? If we can't be honest, we can't be what? Well, I, perhaps a more accurate word: if we can't be forthright. Yeah, like and French I parent. would say. I would say that um, that word should be substituted with criticized uh, because that's what the problem is, is they're being criticized and they don't like it. We're all criticized, man. We're about to criticize you right now. You're here. We're not going to judge you as a person, but we are going to criticize your beliefs. That's where the problem is. With that, when, when you take away the ability to criticize somebody, you truly take away the exposure to better ideas than the ideas that are out there right now. And I, it pisses me off that they would do that. I would stand up for a flat uh, for a flat earther if he was getting hit with copyright strikes from our our side of the, uh, the street. Uh, I'm getting pushed back on that though. Uh, they know that they know what they're doing is unethical. They know that they're full of it. They know what exactly what they're doing. This is not. Oh yeah. Them, yeah. This is not them just saying, oh well, we think we actually have copyright and there's some issues or privacy concerns. This is malicious. This is targeted. This is uh, unethical and, in many cases, illegal uh, because they're filing uh, d false DMCA's, which is perjury. Yeah, yeah. 
So, Derek, um, take this as an opportunity to give the Flat Earth voice uh, and tell FE Core what the Flat Earth community think about what's happening. Just, just take a like few minutes. Genuine and Flat get, Earthers, get, get, yeah. uh, like, stop lying. <laughs> Okay. We say that a lot to them, too. Yeah. yeah, there you go. Okay. I mean, there's a good chance some of them will see this. Uh, I know <coughs> a lot of Flat Earthers do watch my stuff. So I really hope that if any of the board members of FE Core see this, even your own side do not agree with what you're doing. You, know, It is illegal. Reds did a stream earlier with a copyright attorney that flat out said... That's really good, that by the way. That's really good. Is, yeah. Um, you know, so... Not only do us Globofers have to fight back what, about uh, what they're doing, but um, I do feel like Flat Earthers need to fight against what FE Core are doing as well. Because I think it's, it's bad. It looks bad on you guys. Because they see themselves as, like, a voice for you. Not a voice, the voice. Yeah, absolutely. Do you agree, Derek? Right, and so it's like when they uh, silence people like me, you know, it's it's really irritating because I'm yeah. not going along with their their agenda. It'll backfire on them. Oh yeah, it already has started. <laughs> it's the, so. it's going to be real bad. Yeah, real bad. <laughs> um, but okay, let, I would, let's I would say it didn't work. I would say it didn't work out for Daniel Pratt when he copyright strikeed me, but it wasn't working out for him before he copyright struck me. So. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, so I do appreciate you giving me your thoughts on that, Derek. It's, it's good to hear it from a Flat Earther's side. Uh, and it's, it is good to hear that um, the Flat Earth community also disagree with what FE Core are doing. And I really hope that some of the FE Core do see this, because even your guys think that what you're doing is wrong. Um, right, so we're going to get into discussion. But just before we do, I would like to say I've just hit 18,000 subscribers and... Oh my God, I'm blown away constantly by the support that you guys give me. Uh, it means the world uh, and it just makes me want to put out more and more content and just do more stuff for you. So thank you very much for 18,000 subscribers. Um, Steve, thank you to you for helping me and supporting me. Team, thank you to you for like inviting me to work with you because you know it, it means the world that I've got support from people like you. So thank you to everyone oh, watching. Yeah. Thank you to all my subscribers. Thank you to you guys. Um, thank you to Simon Dan and Conspiracy Cats. Uh, thank you to uh, Marvel Girl and they and them for the work they've done on my Discord. Um, and and it, it, I honestly, thank you for supporting me. It means the world. But let's just get on with this. Um, Derek, you're a flat earther. Do you want to tell us why? Uh, well, it's not a new argument. I mean, it goes back further than uh, what most people on YouTube think. Um, like, I took credit for it because uh, I'm a Christian, and I would argue with Scripture against atheists, and they are the ones who brought it to me 10 years ago. And so I took criticism for it way back then. And so that's how I kind of got familiar with it, even though I wasn't entirely on board. Uh, so it's like my ego is not in it. Um, okay. It's just that is what Scripture says. Right, so your main and, argument and for the fact so, would it, come from Scripture. Well, I, I mean, that is uh, where it originally came from for me. Okay, so my question to you is, where in the Bible does it say that the earth's flat? Because I've read the like Bible. Like, it doesn't say verbatim. It doesn't, it doesn't say verbatim flat earth specifically. Uh, okay. But it does, like, it gives descriptions. And from what is described, it, it is a... Uh, an enclosed system. Could That's you give me a particular level. verse that, that says that? Because I, I have read the Bible. I've read it even again recently when I've started dealing with flat earthers. And honestly, f looking through the Bible with an objective, I, I'm, I'm an atheist or probably an agnostic. Thanks to you, Steve. Uh, Try. <laughs> um, and as looking at the Bible with an outside eye, I honestly couldn't see any, way to take that as it's saying the earth is flat uh so what in particular well i mean the, for Bible me saying, the verses that were brought to my attention by atheists were like in particular like job thirty-eight fourteen, like you know, how the earth is turned like clay to a seal 
Okay. I mean, when you think of a seal, it's it's really right there. Can I ask him a quick question? Yeah. A lot of the Bible is parable, or any of it is parable? I see, for me, no. <laughs> oh. All right, so but, Jonas uh, and the whale, all, all that. Your uh, story, then. Yeah. Okay, and so the flood. Oh, yeah. Okay, and so the earth is 6,000 years old and flat. Uh, I'm not going to say exactly that 6,000 because, I mean, it could be 10, but I'm not exactly sure. Okay, uh, okay. Could, could, could be 10. Okay, but, so around 10,000 years of age uh, mm -hmm. and flat. That's, that's okay. Just wanna, just, so, you, so everything in the Bible is taken literally, not parably, not, uh, not as parables, not as allegory. Unless it not specifically a, tells you there's a parable, it'll tell you. Okay. Or it'll also tell you that's like a prophecy. I mean, things like that. I mean, things that really demand you to sit back and consider. But so, other, uh, elsewhere, it's, it's being literal. Not, I, uh, I have one only follow-up before I turn over to Team Skeptic. Um, if you wanted to know the shape of the earth and you didn't have the Bible, how would you go about doing it? Good question. I've done this before. <laughs> Derek, have we lost you? No, I, no, I'm here. Um, I'm just thinking, I mean, because it's like, like before heliocentrism came around a couple thousand years ago, every religion, all of them, were flat earth based. Don't think that's true. How did they get... Let's assume Argar Wendo, that's the case. If you right now said, I need to know the shape of the earth, and you don't have any Bible, how would you go about doing it? How would you go about showing yourself what the shape is? Well, I would have to depend on my own observations, and if it's just based on that, I would still come up with something that's pretty flat. Okay, well, this is why I'm returning to the team. Uh, how is he going to, how, how would he do that? <laughs> how, how, if he has observations, what observation would he have that ever would show that they're flat? Because I don't think any of them actually would. None. None. Other than what it appears at the surface uh, relative to a, an observer that's we could probably say it's less than 10% of 1% of 1%, maybe even more than that, of the uh, entire diameter of the Earth. Um, it's going to appear to be flat. Outside of that, if you use any of the celestial uh, objects to, to logically deduce what the shape of the Earth is, it can't be flat. It just can't. There's no way. Uh, Sunrises and sunsets prove that. Um, the equator traver equatorial traversal of the sun on the equinoxes prove that. Uh, for you yourself, you can go out and um, simply go to a... Any, uh, I'm trying for any of these, you're not using the Earth itself. You keep pointing up. Isn't I mean, yeah, you're using you're using your... Ob hold on, you just said observations, but you, but you said... It says you can measure it. Okay, so... From what you just said earlier, you said that you, if you didn't have the Bible, you would use your observations, correct? Uh-huh. And we're talking about the Earth itself, correct? Y yes. We're talking about our cosmology, the yeah. The, the, our well, cosmology, you, you, yes. Yeah, you, you can't just isolate it and say, I have to look at it from an Earth perspective. If you want to know well, the truth, the truth the hang on, hang on. The truth doesn't care what the shape of the Earth is, okay? The truth is what it is. There's an ontological fact to be had. How you arrive at that fact, that discovered that fact, many different ways of getting there. So he's trying to explain to you now certain ways that you can go about to, to find out that ontological fact. Yes. Way to do that, I, maybe, T.S. And, and without, without having to use anything but your senses. Okay, and this is... It, when, you, when, you, when it all breaks down, and, and there's th other things out there. There's uh, satellite placements uh, in the sky. All you got to do is go and track, go find 10 different, um, 10 different locations. It'll work with three, but find 10. Find 10 different locations, go onto a website, direct TV website, figure out where that satellite is, and plot it based on the location, based on the, uh, the position of the location that you take on the surface of the Earth. Now, one, one will work, one will not, 100%, guaranteed, every single time. The more data points you take, the more you'll understand how right one model is and how wrong another one is. 
Because if you take one data point, you really can't tell anything from it. You take two, they might be pretty close. You take three, you're going to start getting some difference, uh, difference in tri triangulation of where the satellite is. You take four, five, ten, well, then you're really starting to build a... Uh, an, an exact location of where that satellite's located, not just over the position on the surface of the Earth, but also the, the height to the satellite from the surface of the Earth. Again, don't need a Bible and don't need science to tell you what to do. Just do it yourself. So, so we can't use a satellite ourselves. <laughs> yeah, wait, you can't what? <clears throat> So I, I think the, the thing is that, um, oh, oh, hold on, hold on, Craig, hold on, hold on. He just made it. He said you can't do something about satellites. What did you say, sir? Use a satellite ourselves. You can actually. I I can tell you right now how to go see a satellite. Um, if you if you're any anywhere in the in the hemisphere right now in the winter sky or the uh, in where the winter skies are, uh, there's a constellation called Orion. There's a nebula in it, the Great Nebula Orion M42. If you point a telescope. A decent sized one doesn't have to be that great. Uh, I've used about a uh, two inch aperture, 600 millimeter focal length, and about a 22 millimeter uh, ocular. And you 42, and occasionally you'll see this little white light go right through it. That's a corridor, that's actually where satellites go. You can actually see them with the naked eye. So, are you still there? I'm there. I, I just don't believe it. <laughs> so, do you have issues you go with try kind it. of anything <laughs> looking up? You know, um... Well, and the point is, I mean, it, the discussion is about the Earth itself, and I find it interesting when we keep trying to, or when I try to stay focused on the Earth, you're not doing that. You keep deviating to looking up. Okay. All right. Let's stick with what we can experience on the Earth. Now, one route that I always go down is that it is plainly obvious that there is motion on the Earth. Um, this is evidenced by pendulum effect, Coriolis effect, uh, Iatvos, um, and obviously you're going to be aware of what Bob did with a fiber optic gyro. How do you explain the 15 degree per hour drift that a Sagniac effect can register? And that's interesting because it's like, I mean, that, that experiment, I mean, have any one of us uh, reproduced that? Bob did. Who? Well, um, he, he means has anyone else apart from Bob done that? Well, um, <laughs> any fiber optic no. gyro in the world will measure and that see, same I mean, drift. That's, the but that's, what they, that's what they tried to do, though. They bought a $20,000 gyro to go do this and found out there was a 15 degree. I mean, you can so do this yourself. You want to go spend $20,000 for it. Verification from another independent source? Yeah, there's been, this has been done numerous times. Again, no, no, this, has been, like this has been done numerous times. If you want to go do it and spending twenty thousand dollars, why don't you go do it? See, no, that's the thing. You that's could do it yourself. Oh, oh, dude, what other experiments are you even talking about? Okay, so uh, we well, we'll have to look at just pendulum, liberal. Yeah. We we can look at uh, this a simple pendulum effect. Um, there's something I'm trying to do at the moment, uh, copying an experiment by a guy called the gentleman physicist. Uh, what he did was um, he created his own pendulum in the, the stairwell of a block of flats. And using just the amount of drift that the pendulum gave over an hour, he was able to calculate his position and distance away from the North Pole. Um, and you, you know, can do that. Any, anyone can do this because a, a pendulum will maintain its position relative to distant stars, which is why it shows that drift. So you don't just have to rely on something like a fiber optic gyro. You can literally make a pendulum yourself if you've got something that's tall enough and you can get it to swing for at least 45 minutes an hour. You will get that drift where, you know, um, you're not going to get much of a drift on the equator. You'll get much more of a drift as you go up towards the poles. Um, but based on the amount of drift that the pendulum will give, you could then calculate your distance to the North Pole and it will always be exactly right. So what explanation does the flat earth have for the fact that a pendulum will drift what kind of pendulum are you talking about it's an ordinary... any kind of pendulum the one the gentleman physicist did um he it was fishing wire with a big plastic weight on the bottom so there was no magnetism it, or anything it had like to be that. pretty long I yeah would... yeah uh, uh it would be okay so you very long very long straight wire with something very heavy at the end that has momentum to it so you started swinging 
And while it's, it's not going to slow down very, very much in, in a matter of, of, I don't know, the half hour or something like that, you probably need at least a half hour to 45 minutes. And it's always going to stay in the same plane with respect to, as he said, the stars. So it's going to stay in the same plane going back and forth. And as the Earth rotates under it, that's going to give it a 15 degree drift in an hour. Well, a pendulum wouldn't have necessarily 15 degrees, okay. would, uh, depending on how wherever, far away. If, from the wherever you're at, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, with you, 15 at the, pole, at the poles, and then what would be the yeah. cosine of that, depending yeah. on where you're at with respect between the, the equator and the, and the, and the pole. Yeah. But you're gonna, you can figure that out mathematically. I'm sure it's going to be like the cosine of the theta, but whatever, something yeah. along those lines. And, and you know, this is an effect that any pendulum will give. So um, <coughs> what explanation is there for that drift? Well, see, um, I'm looking at it from the angle from, uh, like, if the Earth were moving, why do, do they stop completely? Why does uh, one stop completely? Uh, why, why do they stop? Angela? 100% of the time. Ah, yeah. I see what you're saying. Yeah. So, like, um, like, for, like, like, a, like, a, like a ball from a crane, they always stop. Right. Mm -hmm. So the Just like Steve said. Yeah, the, the pendulum isn't being uh like the motion they, back and, and forward isn't caused by the rotation of the earth the, the pendulum is just swinging under its own inertia uh and right. because of that it is maintaining a, a, a 3d a rigidity in 3d space and as the earth moves underneath it the pendulum the swing will stay the same and um what the gentleman physicist did was he had the, a little paintbrush under the bottom so every time it swung it just scraped along the floor and over, I think he did it, it was 47 minutes he managed to get the pendulum swinging for. And over that 47 minutes, the angle of the drift was what he used to calculate his position to the North Pole. Um, the, the, mo the motion of the Earth isn't going to make the pendulum go back and forward because it's in the reference frame of Earth, but it's still maintaining its rigidity in 3D space. But back to my point about like why it stops. I mean, that would still be inevitably. Steve already answered gravity, it. Right? Yeah, co you have conservation. Well, there's a lot of conservation laws: conservation of linear momentum, conservation of angular momentum, conservation of, of if there's a whole bunch of uh, energy. Um, uh, so there's something called the second law of thermodynamics as well. You're not going to have a perpetual or over unity device. So uh, every system is going to going to try to get into a state of rest. So in this particular case, you have a pendulum going back and forth. It's going to eventually come to a state of rest. Every system has to do that because it's not 100% efficient. But whilst it's swinging, it will maintain its rigidity in 3D space. It, with respect to the plane, it's going to with respect yeah. to a single plane that that pendulum should not deviate from that plane. As you say, it's rigid in 3C in 3D. But because it is um, moving with the Earth's rotation, it, it's within that reference frame, which means that the, the motion of the Earth isn't going to like, make the pendulum swing back and forth. Like, I've heard the argument from flat earthers like, well, why does a crane stay still if the Earth's moving? Because it's on the Earth as the Earth is moving. But then as you get something swinging, it's that swing that you can measure the drift of. But that swing will stop because of the conservation of momentum and it's got a fight against friction and gravity and everything. So eventually the forces will equal out and you know, the pendulum will stop moving. Air, is, it, air resistance. Yeah. But whilst <laughs> yeah, it is air moving, resistance. you, you measure that drift. Does that make sense? In theory? Yes, I get it. So how I do practice you explain too. the fact that yeah, it's not just theory. Theory. In practice. But, but, in practice. But, <laughs> I mean, because I already have it in my mind that since the Earth isn't moving, I mean, of course it's going to stop. And, like, whatever drift you're claiming to measure, I mean, yeah, you can say inertia or whatever, but these are all things that are already supposed to happen in my mind. What do you think inertia is, actually? Well, did I break you it? broke it again. So, could you define do you think inertia? What? What do you, what do you think inertia actually is? You don't have to define it, but when we just give me a rough. What do you, yeah. what do you think it is? Layman's layman's uh, layman's explanation. What is inertia? Yeah, I'm not very good at giving it in layman's. All right. Well, I mean, um, just just talk to me. Talk to me non scientifically. Talk to me and Steve non scientifically. What, what is just it from like, a flat guys. perspective? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Exactly. That's a good one. 
What would you call inertia? If I walked up and go, what's inertia? Like, I just heard you say it. Now I just want to know. Like, like I was three years old. Dad, Daddy, what's inertia? Is there inertia in there? It, you said, hold on, go. I'm sorry. You, it, it cut out. It cut out. Hold on. I didn't hear what you said because Steve was also uh, talking. So what, what did you say? I said, if we're in a moving train, is there inertia in it? Yes. Like, and we can feel it, right? Oh. Uh, no, you don't feel inertia. You sure? feel a change yeah. in momentum. You feel a change in it. Yeah. What is, yeah. Okay. How about this? For a very simple, we're not going to get complicated. There's no reason to. With it. But how about this? For very, very, very simple furniture. Um, something that's moving will stay moving. Something that's at rest will stay at rest. And when you're moving, then the ch the resistance to change. So you you so you need some kind of force to cause a change way from a very very simple way of explaining what inertia is yeah inertia is nothing more than an object's desire to continue moving at the same speed or not move at all yeah to until it's acted by, by an outside constant, exerted force yeah exactly until it's affected by an unbalanced force and the unbalanced oh, force by the way, we all learn these things to accelerate they all mean the same thing <laughs> yeah well, I mean, see, that begs my point. I mean, like, if a pendulum ultimately fi finds a place of rest on a moving object, how are you ultimately explain explaining that? Right, okay, what so um, imagine you had a pendulum on a train with you, all right? Um, and you're sitting uh -huh. there uh, at your table, and you've got a little pendulum on the desk, right? That pendulum will swing and then still stop, even though the train's moving, right? Honestly, I would have to do that experiment for myself. You can't do trust a thought me, experiment would. for that. Tr tr trust me, it if you're would. sitting, right. if you're sitting in a train, right, and a train's going a hundred miles an hour, and you're just sitting and you're holding a pendulum like this, and you swing it, you don't think you, you think that you, you really think that pendulum is going to go on forever in eternity. Let well, me ask I you a mean, question. What, let me ask you something. Of in there, I don't see why not. <laughs> Right, right, What's I, 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 right, I, I don't think he's being honest here. Right, I, I don't think he's being honest. Derek. Right, Derek, so uh, imagine right, you're going sh you know, north. You're going straight forward on this train, okay? But your pendulum is going side to side on the train, right? So it's not got that forward momentum because it's, it's in a different plane. Does that make sense? So what if you do put it in the other way? It would still do exactly the same as if it wasn't. Um, you, you so they call it a frame of reference. Trust. Yeah. So <laughs> the fact that the, my point being is that you're on a moving train and you have a pendulum swing in, that pendulum is still going to stop, even though the train is still moving. You know, you can you can sit there on a train, you can have a glass of water in front of you, and the glass of water. Oh, I'm going to say level. Um, <laughs> the glass of water is going to be. You do it. Level. Don't you do it. <laughs> Right, you know, I'm, I'm sure you've been on a train before with, with a, a drink or something, right? And that, that drink isn't sloshing all over the place just because the train's moving, right? It's not too bad, right? So No, um, it's not I mean, at all. What, it's what not at would... all. And they're, they're, hold on, hold on. We have, to, we have to get things correct here. Yeah. It's not at all. No. Once, you're in it, once you're traveling at the exact same, like at a constant rate, the cup will act as if you're not traveling at all. The liquids in the inside of it will act as if it's not traveling at all. It will find a place to settle. As long as it's undisturbed, it will settle down and it will be completely calm. Yeah. The state of rest with respect to where you're you. So if, if it, you're not, if you and it are moving at the same exact speeds, with respect to you, you have zero velocity difference. Mm -hmm. So it's not gonna. It's not gonna move. It's it. It. Both of you guys might be moving th on the train, but it's moving at the same rate you are. They cancel each other out. That's called an inertial frame of reference. Right. Do you understand frame of references? First off, because Steve brought up a good point earlier when you were saying something about uh, something else, and he was like, "It's called a frame of reference." Um, do you know what frames of reference are? Oh well, yeah, uh, so what's the frame of reference on a sphere Earth again that's moving through space? That's uh, not really... <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's, I, that's I think okay. I think you're misunderstanding here a little bit what a frame of reference well, is. Well, because I know the frame of reference where uh, there's a stationary Earth. 
We okay, well, hold on, hold on. Okay, good point, good point. Let, let's, I, I, I'm going to try to help you out here, okay? So let's say that you're in a car and you're driving around in a car, okay? What is your frame of reference? Let's say you're sitting on the inside of the car, you're looking around, you see the frame of the car. What's the frame of reference? I'm, I'm trying to give it to you at this point. The inside of the car, the windows, the steering wheel, the shifter. What's the frame of reference? The inside of the car. On Earth or just the car? It just the no. Car. <laughs> just the car. You're in a car. You're in a car. <laughs> You're in a car. Hey, okay, so look. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna do something real quick. Okay, I'm gonna uh, set this up real quick for you. Okay, you see this right here? This phone. All right. So we have three accesses on this phone. We have this access, this access, and this access. Okay. This is a frame of reference. This is a three-dimensional frame of reference. So if I was to take a ball in here and drop the ball and it falls down here, okay, as long as all these these axes all move together. I drop a ball down here. We can determine certain physics uh, just from that observation. Okay, and and then the other thing is, is we can determine also whether that frame of reference is moving at a constant speed or if it's accelerating. And we can do that by looking at the physics that occurs inside of that frame of reference. Now, a frame of reference is anything that you can build a coordinate uh, system from. So, if you're sitting on the inside of your car and you're driving in your car, it doesn't matter what's going on on the outside. If all if all you're worried about is what's on the inside of the car, that becomes your frame of reference. In the Earth, we have a frame of reference that is the surface of the Earth. It spins, but all the continents all kind of stay in the same place relative to a fixed point. We can call that fixed point anywhere, whether it's the surface of the Earth. Um, I mean, of course, in this case, you'd have to say it was the surface because if you make the point of reference the center of the Earth, then everything's rotating around it and you get a different, different reference frame. So if you, if you choose a point on the surface of the Earth, then everything that's, that's 100 miles away from that point, even though the surface rotates 180 degrees, every point will still be 100 miles away from that original point. So that's the frame of reference there. Let's try it this way real quick. Derek, follow, can you follow this? Take exactly what he said, because it's on point. And picture this. You're in a train. Like, I have my phone here. And you're, you're not moving. The train's not moving. And I drop the phone. Would you agree? Well, it'll go straight down even if you're not in a moving train. Okay. One step at a time. I, I, yeah. Trust me. Yeah, sure. I want to do I this systematically. It. All right. So you agree that that phone is going to... It's, it's, it's just going to go what's called perpendicular. It's just going to straight down to the ground, correct? Right, I do, because I've seen it. So now, if you're in a moving train, let's say that train, same train is moving at 100 miles an hour, it'll still go straight down with respect to you, right? You're seeing the same thing. You don't notice any change, correct? Correct. Okay, now let's say, let's say uh, Craig is on the outside of the train. He's looking at it, and he sees you drop at point... Uh, time zero, he, he, you, you drop the phone, go straight down. What he's going to see it take a path of what's called a parabola. So he sees it from his frame of reference, the trajectory of my phone not go linear straight down. He's going to see it a, a, a flight path, basically. It's not flight, but I mean, whatever. Uh, it, it's going to be a parabola. So his, his viewing of it from his perspective are two vastly different frames of reference that are going to give us vastly different observations because I'm going to say it's taking a linear path he's going to say it's taking a parabolic path depending on what frame of reference you have that's yeah. why it's critical to know your frame of reference that makes sense sure. so that makes sense that even though the earth is moving because we are on the frame of reference of the earth that's moving the, it's for us it's essentially as though we're still meaning that even though the earth is rotating at 15 degrees per hour if you drop something it's going to go straight down but for someone outside of earth looking at you dropping that thing down it's going to look like it's like steve said you know in a parabolic path but obviously for you on the earth it's going to look like it's going straight down because that is your frame of reference Does that make sense? Yes, yeah, it does. Right. So, back to my point about the pendulum. Why would a pendulum drift? 
Uh, and why would you be able to use that drift to calculate your distance to the North Pole? I would not be able to explain that to you. Okay. Let me let me give you let me give you a uh, just another thing just because this touches on what Craig said and it also touches on what Steve said. Okay. So the laws of motion are pretty um, standard throughout the universe. Okay. So in other words, from your frame of reference, when you drop something on the Earth, you expect it to go down and you expect it to go down every time, right? I mean, if you dropped it and it started to fall down and then all of a sudden it started to drift off to in that direction a little bit, you know, to the, let's say to the east, you drop it and it drifts to the east a little bit. Now, from a purely classical uh, Newton's laws of, of motion perspective, something doesn't match up there. Is that correct? I mean, you dropped it, it should go straight down according to law, the laws of motion, but it doesn't go straight down. It kind of drifts a little bit to the east. Do you, you, do you understand that? That there's something off there? Sure. Okay. So when you know that something is, when you know that there's not supposed to be a force involved, like when you're dropping something in a vacuum or if you're dropping it, whatever, and this goes along with Coriolis, you see that something's off, so you have to make sense of that something being off. Now, if you know that you're, you're in one frame of reference, if you know that your whole frame of reference is, is, uh, is steady, it's not changing, then you can deduce that there was an additional force involved. You could say, well, something happened to make this not just drop straight down, but to drop straight down and, and off to the side a little bit. So then you make sense of that force, and that's what tells you that you're in a non-inertial frame of reference because you know there's nothing pushing it, you know, let's say we're in a vacuum, you know there's no air pressure, you don't see anybody's hand going over there and pushing the object that you're dropping, you're dropping it and it has a little drift to it. And that drift is because you're in a rotating reference frame, which is non-inertial. And that's how you know, that's how you can tell that you're in a non-inertial reference frame without being told that you're in a non-inertial reference frame, or without seeing the outside world, without having to deduce that it's us that's spinning and not the, the universe that's going around us. Okay, so let me put this in could, the form could, of a question. Could be either from, from a reference. Yeah. Sorry. Let, let me put this in the that form of a question for you, Derek. So is there any explanation if the Earth was stationary as to why we would experience this drift? And you're saying we can do it even with a, a basic pendulum, right? Yes, absolutely. Do, do you agree that there isn't a reason for that to happen if the Earth is stationary? Is, is he still there? I mean, because that, I mean that's why, uh, like, Bob's experiment that he said that he did. I mean, it would be really interesting to, like, get some hands-on uh, – material so that it can be like we can be like see here look okay but, but okay his name's Derek you know Derek yes yeah everybody's done this thousands 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 of people have already done this you can go do it yourself but all those people have already done these experiments they're they've been done more times than possibly anybody could ever imagine there's no use to doing them anymore it's already been decided now there's two ways of looking at it you can say okay here's my observation the round earth explains it, the flat earth does it, and I'm going to hold on to the flat earth view because reasons. Or you can say, I'm going to be parsimonious in that if one hypothesis explains things and the other hypothesis clearly does not, and I would go so far to say it actually excludes the other hypothesis, it actually disproves flat earth in many ways, um, then I would say you're in what's called a state of ir irrationality. Rational thinker, would you accept that? Uh, I consider it pretty irrational when we can't observe the Earth curving itself. You, you, you uh, just deflected. You, you just deflected everything that is said. Uh, uh, we're really not talking about the curve right now, but we can get to that. We're, we're talking about the motion at the moment, yeah. which is something that I've tried to specialize in, uh, and I've done a lot of studying in. And you, know, you can't deny that there are these things that we can measure. Um, we know there's a Coriolis force that affects but things that are ballistic, even um, powered, you know, but it's tiny compared to the forces that are actually powering, say, a plane. But <coughs> if you were to fire I mean, a bullet well, you know, from like north Coriolis, to south, then it would deflect in a certain way. And Craig, Craig, 
Craig, are yep. you familiar with experiments where they say that they've you know poured water into a tub and it drains in opposite directions? Do you think that's, that's okay. yeah, that, yeah, that yeah, that, that's, 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 that's um, actually yeah. not thank even you, the true you. thing. So, I mean, why all, why do they need to lie about that? I don't get it. Scam artist, and they yeah. they they're they're, pray, they're preying on people that don't understand physics. Yeah, I mean it, the, the whole water going down uh, a drain thing isn't true. You know, you can fill up your bath now and pull the plug out, and if you span your fingers in a certain way, that's the way that the whirlpool would go. You know, it's, the, it's, the, it's two things. It's when the piping, the way the piping is most of the time, but the way they do it, they'll when they 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 pull it out, they kind of give it a little spin to it yeah. but uh, that's a scam but that doesn't that doesn't answer my question you deflected from my questions let's get back to it i have <laughs> observate i have observations that demonstrably so show one hypothesis <laughs> will explain it one hypothesis will not and matter of fact it just it actually falsifies that hypothesis for you to hold that falsified hypothesis by its very nature of doing that is in a state of irrationality do you agree Wait, I mean, you're trying to call me irrational, right? Yes, kind of. Because, but, but I want you yeah. to agree. Why? You're holding no, a position that's untenable. That's that's actually considered to be irrational. To I hold think an untenable what Steve's position. point, like, if I could just, like, what Steve's point here is that the observations that there is motion to the Earth are mutually, you know, impossible if the Earth is stationary they can only be described because there is a motion and it literally discludes the possibility of the earth not moving so knowing that that fact maintaining the position that the earth is flat and stationary is an irrational position to maintain do you agree with that no because uh, i mean even though, yeah, I believe we're on a... An irrational but, uh, person uh, wouldn't. I, I, can't, I can't attribute it to Earth moving when I already am uh, under the thinking that, you know, there are, is electromagnetism and just a myriad of other things that could cause such a thing. Well, there's no, there's no, no way electromagnetism like could cause that. What? Like, absolutely no, no way. What? I mean, you're throwing a term out there, and, and I, I really not. I, by the way, I'm being nice, so I'm not trying to be disrespectful. Yes, yes, trust me. Yeah. I, I if, people, if you don't know, if you haven't seen me before. This is this is my really nice. Me too. Uh, no, you're always a dick, but <laughs> <laughs> but 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 okay. Um, you're throwing out terms like electromagnetic radiation. If you if, do, you look at it from our point of view. If you don't even have a basic understanding of of like. We'd like a pendulum because most of us are taking physics. We have to just understand what harmonic frequencies are, harmonic relationships. Uh, there's certain uh, constants that are that are involved in, in dealing with pendulum uh, back and forth motion. How much energy is stored between potential energy and kinetic energy? All this stuff that goes into to understanding physics. That understanding. Do you really think you want to go down the path of electromagnetics because it's a far more complicated topic? probably have a background in any way shape or form to understand what electromagnetic wave even actually is would, would you agree on that i don't have enough background you're correct in that happened uh, and that's fine i appreciate that but so why would why would you make this weird assumption that electromagnetic radiation could do something that just it's not I didn't say radiation but just electric well, no, that's what i mean, I, mean no, I can dispel well, the whole electromagnetism thing with just looking at column's law because even column's law requires a distance to the center of the earth to be able to calculate the things that you would calculate using it so even if you it were to say these things radio, are yeah. columns law instead of newton's law of gravity that still would require earth to be a globe because the you know our you know the, the r squared um part of that Coulomb's law is, is the yeah. same thing as, as, as the gravitational law only on a smaller scale ones for electromagnetic uh yeah. repulsive yeah, but static e even, forces. But I mean, even the, using the columns law for, ele for electromagnetism, electrostatic, it still requires a distance to the center of Earth to be able to yeah. calculate it. So, electromagnetism would not disclude the Earth being a globe, and to calculate things using columns law would be impossible on a flat Earth. I'd, I'd go with that. <laughs> yeah, does that make sense? Because I'm well, like with things like with heliocentrism, your measurements they actually do make sense if you're yes. under that view. They really do. I know that. 
I'm not yeah. But that. even if even if you're a flat earther, uh, cosmological measurements don't match up. That's what we're trying to say. Even if you okay, approach no, it no, from, no, 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 hold on, no, hold on. No, wait, let me finish. Wait, let me wait, finish. No, wait, let wait, me wait, finish, wait, and I'll, I'll give you no, an opportunity. No, let me finish. I'm, I'm not just a flat earther. I am a biblical Christian, right? That's like fine. Scripture, That's fine. Says, Regardless, dude, they are not supposed to make sense. Anybody who does, who, like from a flat earth, okay. Who tries to make so sense it, is it, going to end up inverting it, or let me let me ask you a question. If I wanted to start, if I wanted to start my own oh, wait, math wait, cult, wait, okay. guys, we're talking over Hold each other. Hold on, I'm sec. going. I'm going. Yeah, he he talked over me. I'm going to talk over him a little bit now. If I wanted to start my own math cult, and I told you that the plus sign did not really do what the plus sign did, and you went and you looked at the two plus two, and you said, "Well, that can't be right because my cult my cult book said that the the plus sign is there to to confuse you, no matter how how good it looks." No matter how much it makes sense, it's there to confuse you. That's what your basic, your argument is right now. We can tell no. you that looking up into the sky, no, hold on. We can tell you that looking up into the sky, no, we can tell you that looking up into the sky, we can determine, we can make certain, uh, certain deductions based on observations of the sky. And you keep saying, why do you have to look up in the sky? Why do you have to look up in the sky? I just said that, oh, well, this wouldn't even make sense on a flat earth. And you said, well, that's what the Bible said. It's not supposed to make sense. Okay, so every time I tell you that something's wrong with what you say, you're going to just come back to me and say, well, that's what the Bible says. It says I'm, you're, I'm supposed to sound wrong because that's just the way it is. It's trying to, to make you understand, that it's trying to convince you that no matter how much sense I make or science makes or scientists make, it's not going to match up with the Bible, therefore you shouldn't trust it. And that's exactly what you just said. Okay. Let me ask you this question uh, about the Bible and Christianity in general. What percentage sure. of followers of the Bible and Christians think the earth is flat? I can't give you a number like that. Do you think guess, there's guess more people that would think the earth's flat that are Christians than otherwise? Because I can tell you now for a fact, 99% of Christians don't think the earth's flat. Them and... I talk to Christians all the time. I've got a lot of close friends that are Christians. And there's no reason why the Bible and religion can't live side by side with our current understanding of the universe. You know, the thing about the Bible is it's so open for interpretation that yes, you can interpret what it says as the earth being stationary. But there's so much to say that that isn't the case that you would then have to think, well, if that doesn't match with the observations of the universe, then maybe that's well, not sorry, what it there, means. There is no interpretation where you can say, oh, yeah, the Earth is moving, spinning. Yeah, they're, they're... Ball. No, those don't exist. Oh, we, I, we get you a biblical scholar. That's a wholly different ball game. Um, that's not and, something uh, I'm really uh, going to get into. But I, I could get you professional... Prof I could get you biblical scholars that would that would agree and disagree with you depending on the scripture because there's some places that does talk about the firmament and they, some places they probably did have a writer. 66 some odd people wrote the Bible. So, I mean, one of them, two of them probably did have flat earth perspectives because that's normative for, for certain cultures. But we know now that that is not the case. Simply is not the case. Uh, but like I think Joshua, when, he, when, he had the, when, he, when he had the sun and moon stop moving, he didn't mention oh my the God. earth. Because he was all under, already under the impression that the Earth wasn't moving. But like I, I was mean, saying, you're basically saying, well, you basically would have to take the angle, oh, well, he was too stupid. So God just overlooked that fact and stopped no. doing anyway. No, okay, no, 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 no. I, 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 I wouldn't say it's too stupid, oh, but oh let's think God. about when the Bible was written. I mean, you look at the Old Testament, what's like 4,000 years ago, New Testament, two and a half thousand years ago, whatever. You know, they didn't have technology. They... Uh, uh, let's look at the the phrases the Bible says about <clears throat> you could observe the four corners of the earth. That literally means yeah, hold that's on, just hold as on, far hold as he could see, right? Don't don't leave don't leave that Joshua statement because I, I have uh, I recently covered that in a video and I'd like to step to speak on that. So before you get off to um, to other oh. parts of the Bible, I would like to address at least that what he said about Joshua. Oh, go ahead, team. Okay, so you would agree that in Joshua, in that in that um, portion of the Bible, that the uh, I'm I'm not I can't remember who exactly it was, but somebody had said uh, they need they needed more time for the armies to defeat the the other armies. Is that correct? Like they needed more uh, daylight. Yeah, so they they needed more daylight. So God stopped the sun and the and and the moon in the sky. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Okay, so sun and moon in the sky at the same time denotes what? Uh, what possibility? It's called a solar eclipse, right? Like the moon going in front of the, the sun? It also happens to match up with everything that we have as far as our history. If we, Let's say we, ta we take what we understand about our cosmological uh, geometry, right? We can ba go backwards in time. Hold on one second. We can go backwards in time. Hold on one second. We can go backwards in time, and we can trace it all the way back to that time and determine that there was an annular eclipse on that around that exact same time. Third, third. The people who were t taking the most historical uh, references during the time, during that time, were the Egyptians. Can you tell me where the Egyptians saw, because they focused on the sun, by the way. Can you tell me where the Egyptians write about the sun stopping in the sky? Because if it stopped for one portion of the flat earth, it has stopped for all portions of the flat earth. Why is it that only one account of the sun and moon stopping in the sky during a time when historical record was taken? Explain that, please. Well, I mean, if you are going from a scriptural point of view, uh, it tells you that, like, Egyptians and everything they were about was idolatry. So, I mean, I don't expect Eleven. them to tell the truth either. Do you know if I do? I've, I've noticed this. Do you know how? Okay, this is you were talking about flat Earth. Or, or, excuse me, FE Core before doing things that you thought were unethical. When you divert, when you do, just dodge a question like that, you're looking unethical because what you did was you completely well, I, dodged. You said it. that there was an eclipse. That's not even what that. A, an, uh, yeah, was an, uh, an angular eclipse. Annular, annular. It's it's yeah, when the sorry, eclipse. It's when the moon. Eclipse, I believe it's when the moon it, or where the sun is as big as it is as possible in the sky. You still have a little bit of around it. Yeah, and you and you still have uh, the most defined portion of the ring going around the outside of the sun. Yeah, it's not a total eclipse. It's an annular eclipse where you still have the the, the corona still around it. You can see in some flame. You could buy. You can still burn your retina, by the way. And and do you not think that. Um, Tired, man. <laughs> do you know what I think? If you were to right, witness way, that happening, you know, the annular eclipse happening, it would seem like the sun has stopped in the sky for a little bit because it it's gonna you're gonna focus on that difference that the sun is showing to what it normally does. So, is it possible that it wasn't that it stopped? It was just that they noticed what was going on because there was something specifically happening. And see, the thing is, in Scripture prior, it doesn't even indicate that the earth is moving. So that is what Joshua was operating with. But we know we're moving, though. And That's so, not even a... <laughs> yeah, the, But the, why did no other says, civilization around the world... Sorry. Why did no other civilization around the world document this, this, the sun and moon stopping in the sky? Because there was a Why lot of civilizations. Only... But again, that's irrelevant. Well, if if this event actually had, took place, the Egyptians and other civilizations at the time would have recorded it. I'm sure that would have Chinese would have recorded it. Nobody else recorded these things. The only people that recorded, recorded it, it were the were the people who wrote the Bible. That was the only the only. Uh, talk about the sun stopping in the sky because God stopped it. First off, by by definition, because it's God that stopped it, it's going to be a Christian story. It's an allegory. It's made up. It's designed to say, hey, look, God will protect you. And what's and worse is, it, I don't think he's going to answer, but what's worse is you're looking at something that was written thousands of years ago compared to what we understand now by by very sophisticated equipment and astronomy and astrophysics and cosmology and cosmogony a long way in technology to know a lot of these things for the same reason why if you have a medical procedure you're not going to be using a book from the 1800s to do that medical procedure or a doctor's not going to yeah. right would you, you would you want to would you really want to go for surgery and go oh use an 1827 a medical procedure and how this is supposed to be done rather than modern technology? No, because you have a better understanding of medicine now, right? We have a better understanding than they did 2,000 years ago. To think otherwise, again, is completely irrational. Okay, all right. Let me ask you a question that I've actually always wanted to ask a biblical... Flower. Are you sure you're still there? I'm here. Yeah, right. Okay, because you're awfully quiet, but... 
I think he is he is thinking about his responses, which I do appreciate. Um, but right, this is a question I've always wanted to ask a biblical flat earther. We got you in a rocket and we send you to space and you quite clearly see that the earth is a globe and rotating. Do you still go, no, the Bible says it's flat? Of course not. Okay, so why do you take that? Why, why would you accept that, but not the observations of other people and the observations that we can use technology to get? What What's the difference between you go in and seeing it yourself. Well, because, I, I mean, I, I used to believe in all of this. I was a trekker, not a trekkie, right? And at the end of the day, I mean, we are believing people who say that they've got in the moon and space. Yes. And every last one of them has taken an oath to keep a secret. No. Yes. Wait, can he, can he say that again? He was breaking up. Yeah, just say, say that statement again for us, please, bud. They have taken taken an oath. Who who's they? Like people who work at NASA, astronauts. What does NASA got to do with anything? <laughs> well, no, I, 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 see his, I see his <laughs> point. Um, I asked him about observation of others, uh, and that went straight to well, NASA are liars. But there's there's so many different countries out there that have done these experiments. Yeah. We're not the you know there was a 248 countries in the world, something like that. I don't know some. some there's there's, like there's 47 space agencies, government and oh. private around the world. Yeah, so I mean, we're not NASA's nothing. Matter of fact, NASA is probably it's, it's not even competitive to SpaceX any longer. No. So NASA's irrelevant. So individual citizens have done these experiments as well. well individual citizens. Well, well. The, the the same thing is though they don't make the rules for any. I didn't swear any allegiance when I when I learned science. I didn't have to take I an know oath. You didn't. Right. I know you didn't. Yeah, well, so that's okay. Right. Let me let me put it this. Okay. I want to be an astronaut. Right. I spend all my life studying physics, uh, engineering. I apply to NASA. I get accepted. I go through all the training to be an astronaut. I get to that day where I'm going to be the one to mm -hmm. go into space. I get to the rocket and they're like, shh. You're not actually going. It's a secret. Do you know how fucking pissed off I'd be? Do you think I would not keep yeah. that secret? I would be like, Fuck oh, you spent your whole life training. <laughs> By the way, uh, I got. Yeah, that's the thing. It's I mean, you guys are way smarter, in my opinion, than actual astronauts. Yes, you are. But we, we, no, by the way, yes, I want to correct this. There, there's 150, there's 195 countries, so I was 50 off, but I was pretty close. But whatever, I mm -hmm. looked it up. I want to make sure. Uh, but 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 yeah, he's exactly right though. Um, for example, I'll give you. Okay, my background was a nuclear reactor. Uh, training so was craig so both yeah. of us we, we studied nuclear reactors uh we used to train people to operate nuclear power plants we went through a lot of of training um to, to find out like with eric debay's eric debay's right saying there's no such thing as nuclear power i'd be like uh wait a minute here what the hell did i spend years studying for uh if nuclear power doesn't exist what, what what's actually in the reactor core little hamsters going through wheels you know what <laughs> out of cheese you know, what, what this, what's the deal here right not, not to mention that anybody that actually, not anybody that actually studies science and ha has a job in something like a nuclear reactor or what I did with electronics technician work or anything that's science based, we have to apply what we learned. It's huh. not like they just teach us and then we go in there and it's a, it's sitting there and says, okay, guys, every time that light turns red, push this button, and that's your job. You went through yeah, three, four work, years of we, training. We, we would be going, oh, wait a minute here. I learned this, but psh, this isn't working yeah. the way I, I – uh, this is not doing what it's supposed to do. It doesn't, it's not working. Yet every time it does, when we do testing, a hydrostatic test, uh, everything I learned about fluid theory and, and thermodynamics and metallurgy, ah, it, it works. Thank God because I hate doing hydrostatic testing because mm -hmm. if anybody's ever done it, the, 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 one, of the, one of the ways to detect for hydrostatic failure is that you die. <laughs> yeah. it, it's not <laughs> the greatest test that. in the world. No, it's pretty efficient. It's it's fairly efficient. Yeah. Hey, it failed, but you're dead. But hey, at least somebody else knows that it wasn't wasn't sad. Hey, hey where's Steve McRae at? Uh, we had a hydrostatic failure. Well, hold, you're supposed to it's supposed to start <laughs> leaking first, right? You you're supposed to check for leaks, right? But but if it's brittle fractured because if it's at the wrong pressure and temperature, then the material can brittle fracture, and then you get you know explosions. <laughs> so yeah, I never like doing that kind of stuff. <laughs> That's what he's talking about, theory to yeah. practice, right? Because you said before something along the lines of, oh, this is all theoretical or this is all theory. No, there, the, all this stuff is practical. It has practical utility. I'm not calling everything a theory, no. Well, let's look at um, the engineering behind 
making a rocket go into space that are people just faking that they've they've built a rocket that can do that you know have they lied about the physics and, themselves? you know and for me I, I i have to relinquish the fact that my answer is yes because i mean you got werner von braun saying that like you would have to expend all the fuel in the thing just to get into orbit and then you would have to oh. refill it again to send it to the moon but in just like a couple of years they say that they designed a whole new rocket like a whole new system for fuel so, wait and, so like, do now, now do you system. understand rocket theory um, right let, let me tell you what's wrong with what you just said there, because a rocket going into orbit will use all of the fuel in its stage one boost boosters. It does yes. use all mm -hmm. the fuel. It's absolutely right. And then it discards those. And then once you're in space, you don't need the amount of fuel that you had to escape Earth's orbit. So you don't need as much fuel to say to go from the Earth to the moon as you actually needed to leave Earth. That, that's why they discard the stage ones and, well, now SpaceX catch them and stuff. But, you know, that, that's why rockets separate when they go into space. Because, yes, they do use all the fuel. And then they have a secondary engine that will, um, you know, you have Miko main engine cut off. And then you'll have the second stage ignition, which is a much smaller engine with probably less fuel and, and less power. Because it doesn't have to contend with escaping Earth's gravitational pull. Does that make sense? Did sure. I say that right, Steve? That makes sense to me. I mean, the, 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 there's a couple of different things on the rocket equations, but when you're when you're having a on your main boost, and by the way, Kerbal for the win, right? Yeah, Kerbal Space Program. <laughs> um, I can't wait for Kerbal Space Program too. Look beautiful, doesn't it? Uh, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, it does look great. I looked at some of the images, but yeah. So your 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 main solid boosters don't have any throttle ability, so they're they're going to be used up. As they're used up, they're 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 thrown, cast aside. But as you're you're you actually have fuel being used up, your payload's differing, right? Because you're using full fuel, your thruster weight ratio is changing. Uh, this affects your rocket. So very complicated equations to maintain center of uh, balance and thrust and uh, efficiency of the uh, the nozzle, the direction of the nozzle, the shape of the nozzle, all these things in school to learn. And if it didn't get to where it's supposed to go, as Craig said, they're going to be some pissed off people Yeah, for having to learn all that stuff for absolutely nothing. I mean, personally for me, if I'd gone through all that training and I got to that point and they were like, no, I need you to swear an oath that, that, to keep this secret, I'd say no. <laughs> like, I'd be like, and, I you know, you. That may be where you stand. And, and, okay, just something that's in my mind, right? Like, okay, like this all makes sense. We're all on board with that. And then we get, you know, like video footage of Buzz Aldrin and, you know, faking the shape of the earth in the back of the window. Mm-hmm. You just hurt my brain. No, it's, it's for real. That didn't happen. There was no, no, no faking of the shape. It's shake. not for yeah. real. <laughs> um, the, uh, what, uh, a funny thing happened on the way to the moon has been thoroughly debunked. Uh -huh. Trust me. Like, like, yeah. I've, I've debunked most of the claims, but there's people that have done it a lot better than me. That There was no faking of the, the shape of the window. Um, the, the, th the shadow that you saw was literally the astronaut getting in the way of the camera. You know, it was quite clearly, um, you know, a shot of Earth that they got using a Hasselblad camera. You know, the, the, these it wasn't faked. And when you listen to the actual conversations that the astronauts were having, they're literally just talking about getting a good shot of the Earth. They're not talking about faking it. And I honestly don't see how people can take what they're saying as them talking about faking it. If you take tiny little snippets of what they say, because you can take one sentence that anyone says and twist it to mean anything trust me it's happened to me but if you listen to the entire conversation and the uh, you know i think that there's something like 300 hours of audio recording that you can actually access access and listen to yourself you listen to the whole thing there is absolutely no way that you would think that they were talking about faking that shot of the earth from where they were have you ever heard of the deep space uh, climate observatory derek no. Okay, it's called Discover Satellite. So that's, that's at the Grange Point One. It's about a million miles away from the Earth. It has actually taken from about a million miles a full picture of the Earth. 
And that image you can process many. You can go through any kind of I think it's called ELA or um, uh, uh, image and processing, and it is 100% legit picture, and that's taken from one million miles away from the Earth, um, to a thousand miles or something, close enough to a million. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's called the, it's Discover Satellite, uh, deep deep space cli uh, climate observatory. But uh, you might want to look into that because that is actually a real picture. That has been taken. The Earth is round. It's it's case over. I mean, it's it. I don't. Know. The fact that, that you want to believe yeah. something, you can look at pictures from Discover and look at the time and date that they were taken. Look at the cloud patterns, and then you can actually correlate that to with what it actually was. You can um, with Himawari satellite, for instance. Uh, I advise everybody to check out Where's Wally's channel because he has, in my eyes, conclusively proven that the Himawari is a real satellite because he has done so many observations of this is what the Himawari satellite, which is taking an image every 10 minutes and, and live streaming it. And then he has correlated that by looking up at the clouds from where he is in Australia and matching it exactly to what the Himawari is showing. And honestly, the compute, the computing power to constantly do that at the rate that it's done just doesn't exist. And Himawari, they, yeah, it actually does it, I believe, about nine different bands. Yeah. It's something like between nine, yeah, so nine plus or 12 bands. Uh, it, it's ridiculous how many bands that they have for, for the satellite that you would have a high-definition uh, resolution photograph every 10 minutes. Uh, it's just not something that's going to be feasible. And then, obviously, you have the direct observation of what is seeing that has to correlate. Um, this is the difference between science and conspiracy conspiracy because you have to have the conspiracy theory in order to try to, to promulgate your narrative and what you want to hold on to for your unsubstantiated beliefs. You're welcome to do that. The rest of the world is going to be moving on. We'll get an education. People actually understand these topics. People that actually are productive members of society. All you're going to be doing is looking like somebody that, that wants to, to, to believe something for, for really no reason. There's nothing, there's nothing preventing you from understanding the science. You don't sound like you, know, you don't have the potential to, to learn it. The only thing that's you preventing you from doing it, for some reason, you want to believe what you want to believe, even though it doesn't matter. If there is a God, God is not going to give a shit whether you believe the earth is round or flat. What kind of God would care? God would want you to know the truth one way or another and how you come to that truth, to something that has been falsified Many times over, by trying to elicit all these different types of conspiratorial theories, that's not a god that I think that anybody should probably worship. Mm, yep. Um, just want to quickly shout out because uh, someone did remind me that the best place to see a debunk of a uh, funny thing happened on the way to the moon is on Jem Panda's channel. By the way, I mean, he's done it step you, by step. Have you ha have you tried to talk about Cybrell at all? Have a what? Sorry. Bart Cybrell. It's his documentary. Oh, oh Mark Mark Siegel. Um, yeah, well, he's... You know, the guy that got person. punched in the face? Yeah. The guy that yeah, got punched guy. in the face. By Buzz, by Buzz was a, who, 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 who was a punch? Buzz? All it, 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 it was Buzz, yeah. 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 And I tell you what, yeah. if Buzz yeah. had hit him again, I'd have paid towards that fucking, like... Nah, I, I, oh, I, come on. I, I'm, not, I'm not a big I'm not a big violence person, but in that particular case, <laughs> yeah. I'll, make, I'll make a justified exception. <laughs> like, um, and I, I suppose the thing about being a biblical flat earther is... If God is all powerful and can do anything, what discludes God from making a globe Earth and a universe as we know it to be based on science? If God is all powerful, then why couldn't the Earth be a globe? Because he, he could bloody create it as a globe, right? And I'm not going to argue that either. I mean, he could. And the point is, if that's what he did, it should be described. But you but do understand you put it in my book. Even if you put it in... Even if you put it in... No, no, no. Wait, wait, wait. wait I get my finish. I'll answer. Even if you put it in metaphor, there's nothing you can come up with where, oh, yeah, this is where the Earth started spinning and it's a sphere. It doesn't okay. exist. So, in, in, the Bible, in the Bible, it says, God looked down upon the circle of the Earth. How do you get a circle of the Earth when it's a flat plane? How do you get a, a sphere out of a circle? Are you fucking kidding me? Did Are you, you just fucking say no? kidding? Me? 
<laughs> Hold on. I'm time out. Kidding. Stop being dishonest. Time to stop being dishonest. If you uh, look at a sphere from any fucking point of view, if you look at a sphere, it's a perfect circle. It doesn't matter which which point of view you go from. You can move right. anywhere and get any further, any distance away from it. And when you look at it, guess what? It looks like a two dimensional circle. That, um, I don't, That's uh, you properties probably can't see the stream right now, but sphere. I've got a spinning globe on the stream right now, and it looks like a circle. You know. If, well, it is it, a circle. I mean, yeah. it's, it's no, a three D no circle. About it. <laughs> well, see, and that's the thing. I mean, in that particular verse, he used circle, and yet in another verse, he used the word ball. If okay, so was, a, that is the word. So there's he no used. way. There is no way for you to misconstrue a flat plane with a ball. But there is an absolute easy geometrical explanation as to why you could look at a three dimensional sphere and see a two dimensional circle. In fact. Yeah. Everybody that looks at a three-dimensional sphere sees a two-dimensional circle, and not a single fucking person looks at a flat surface and sees a ball. The easiest way to even describe that is if I take if I take a three-dimensional sphere and I shine a light. What shadow are you going to get? What kind of what sh what shadow am I going to get? I'm going to get a circle. Presentation of a three-dimensional object. And not not only that, but the, surely the Bible's full of contradictions because. Yeah, it's got the verse where it says he looked down on the circle of the earth, but then there's also verses where someone looked upon the four corners of the earth. And I don't know about you, but I've never seen a circle with corners. Oh, and you see, that's why I look back at that verse, because it says circle of the earth. I mean, what else is a circle on the earth? Because a circle is what you would get Not for the earth a circle. What if, it's, what if it's described as a over it? Circle of the earth. But do you oh, understand we know the difference between thing? <laughs> Yeah, the ferment is definitely not there. But uh -huh. do you do you know what the difference between exegesis is and eisegesis? Do I what? Do you, do you know what exegesis is? Do I know who? The textual criticism. Never mind, I'm done. <laughs> um, Where's my scotch? <laughs> uh, okay, I'll tell you what. I, I, we are going to have to start wrapping this up because I know Steve's got a stream to get to. Um, I have a premiere. Do my stream. I'm, I'm, I'm drinking scotch after this. And just... <laughs> I've got a premiere in 20 Corner minutes. Enjoy. Know. And it's been uh, a pleasure, gentlemen. I hope um, it I did and evoke too much hate. I know I, no, I, Derek, yeah, I, no, I appreciate no hate, no the conversation involved. from no, you. No um, it's no actually been one of the more pleasant, flatter conversations that I've ever had. Um, and I do thank you very much for coming on and giving us the, the flat earth's opinion on what FE Core are doing. FE Core, if you're watching, even your guys think that you're being dicks. Fucking stop it. Um, uh, Derek, would you just like to take five minutes to give any final thoughts? No, I, I think uh, we covered most of it. Okay, then. Well, thank you for coming. Uh, Steve, anything that you'd like to say? Uh, do you want to get your Super Chats out first or anything? Or are you going to do that? Uh, I'll, I'll do that just before we close up. Um, no, not really. Uh, I'm going to be doing, I, I was going to do a Ask a Philosopher tonight, but uh, we're going to do uh, theological cognitivism and ichthyism, but Nick's not feeling too well. He's tired. I'm tired, so we're going to postpone. But I am going to be doing RNC R tonight, tomorrow, Roman Coke night. So bring your alcohol, 6 o'clock p.m. Uh, we're going to may have Undoom join us, um, so that'd be pretty cool. That but be uh, yeah, it'll be fun. Yeah, so <laughs> come drink with us tomorrow. <laughs> Uh, any of my uh, subs of that aren't Steve subscribed was... to Steve, please go and subscribe to Steve McRae, um, one of the best channels on YouTube, without doubt. Uh, team, you anything you'd like to say? Yeah, I was going to say uh, tomorrow, Steve. Normally I'm there and hanging out, but I think tomorrow I'm actually going to have some drinks with you, man. I think I'm going to maybe reserve, reserve going out tomorrow night, just kind of stay inside the house. I'm going to be live streaming tomorrow too. So, hey, if you want to do a uh, live stream with me pre-Rum and Coke night, and then we can kind of shoot everybody that way, uh, well, you're more than welcome to right Yeah, so let's uh, let's plan that out. Tomorrow, guys, we'll be doing a live stream on my channel, and then we're going to be heading over to Rum and Coke night with Steve, and we're all going to get fucked up together. That's what we're going to do. Hope you hope you're ready. Can't, for I can't get too messed up. I got I got a I got a date afterwards with Sweet Heathen. Ooh, Ooh Steve, Bouch. that that was a Bow humble. Wow, that that was a <laughs> humble brag. <laughs> oh. You know, I almost lost a bet. I almost lost a bet and had to get a brown chicken, brown cow tattooed on my hand. Brown, <laughs> brown chicken, cow. brown cow. <laughs> right, we we get super uh, chats. But, hey, I was gonna do it though. We get super chats read and we get out of here. Um. 
So, where are we starting? Five Australian dollars from John Rapp. Let's get the super chat started. I always see Iron Core now. The irony of them claiming it's a fraud. Ergo, they call themselves a fraud. Yep. Uh, Five dollars from Lady <coughs> Skeptic. Just showing some love to my favorite YouTube people. Much love to FTFE and Team Skeptic. Thank you. We love you too, Lady Skeptic. 25 Rons. I do love some Ron Weasleys from Lucy and Andreas. So, being an idiot proves the earth is flat. I think this should have been an argument all along. Nobody Ding. will disagree anymore. GG, Craig. Uh, $10 from Tim Hill. When I try to focus on the earth, you choose to focus on things that prove the earth. That's not fair. <laughs> uh, $2 US dollars from Brian Shannon. Three quarters all-star cast tonight. Uh, $2.99 from James Collins. Ancient <laughs> Egyptians were NASA shills. Derek. <laughs> uh, two pound from Stevos. Look at the V2 rocket. And 50 Australian dollars from Aussie Globehead. Kerbal, take me to the moon. Uh, I think I might actually, when... Kerbal Space Program I just did out. that. Um, I'm going to stream that on this channel. Uh, wait, wait, wait. I just did that on Kerbal. I just had a stream, and we went to the Mun and back safely. That took three hours, by I the way. I must have missed that one. Uh, <laughs> oh, a couple more. Five dollars from Australian dollars from John Rapp. Derek, you've been given good information and instructions by all. Have you taken anything in, or have they been talking past you? Um, I do think Derek listened, and uh, I hope that he goes away and has some things to talk uh, to think about, definitely. And five dollars from Harry SK. Derek, consider the falsehoods in the Bible, such as advocating slavery and marginalizing women. The shape of the earth is flat is no different. Absolutely agree. Well said, Harry SK. Um, agree to that too. Yeah. Uh, but I'll, but but to to say that uh, one thing is is an interpretation. The other one's actually what it's saying. You know, with the slavery yeah. and the the treatment of women and whatnot. That was. That was a bad social construct that they were writing about in the Bible. I, I don't agree with it, but I, the 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 modern day person interprets those uh, the flat Earth scriptures. Those are just interpretations. Those aren't like like nobody was out there going, guys. The Earth is fucking flat. Okay, guys, the Earth is flat. Everybody needs to understand this. It's flat. They were Not saying that about the. <laughs> no, yeah, right. No, I'm saying they weren't. <laughs> There was nobody standing on pedestals saying that. There were people advocating for the other things. It, that was not necessarily interpretation. That's more of a actual uh, f facts from that time. Um, the other well, that, is just well, interpretation of what people were saying they saw. Uh, that goes back to what we stated initially. And if Derek's still here, I hope he he, he, he listens to this. You hear, still there, Derek? I'm here. And uh, I don't okay. agree with this either. But and that is what okay, Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. You may want to go look what's called this. Uh, what's called a syntactic, a syntactic versus semantic distinctions. Okay, so when you have a linguistic thing, there's something called a syntax that you're looking at, which is a superficial understanding of the of the sentence. And then you look at underneath that, a more deeper level, you have the semantical meaning. And so what I've noticed with a lot of people that have a hyperliteral, where they read certain things, they take what's called a um, more of a, a syntactic approach. So you're looking at the syntax, and you're not understanding the semantic. Uh, understanding of what the, the the intent of the person speaking it is. There's that's what they're called locution versus your illocution, and the illocutionary fa fact or the illocutionary thing that somebody's trying to say isn't necessarily what they're actually verbally saying, which is the locution. And so I think you might have an issue where you're reading things too hyper literally because there are certain sentences that you can make with, that make perfect sense um, with, with syntax but have no actual cognitive meaning to them. They have no actual semantic meaning to them. These are what I was going to do tonight on my show, tonight on my channel, but we got canceled, so this is something that I, I'm, I'm a little bit more familiar with because I've been researching Speech Act it for like last year or so. I'll look at that because I think what you're doing is I see a lot of people do that exact same thing. They read something and they go, this is what it says verbatim, and they're going to take any... Anything, any in, infelicity or any inconsistency to try to, to, to push their own belief that they've already have established rather than trying to understand the context, which is called exe exegeting what you're reading rather than eisegeting it. You, you want to read it from the original point of the author's perspective, not how you're supposed to interpret it. Yeah. I'll leave it at that. Well, I mean, uh, I think we can all agree. Like, if the Bible says, you know, do not steal, we all know what that means, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, and a lot of the Bible is based on that point blank. 
well, that depends on actually so ethical much theories. But I can spend four hours. I can spend four hours <laughs> on ethical theories. Anyway, um, yeah, I just want, I just want to note. one person in the chat. This I've seen this pop up a couple of times. Markinson Seizu, the Earth is round or flat? FTFE, please answer me. I need a really serious answer. Here's a serious answer. The Earth is a globe with a circumference of forty thousand and seventy five kilometers. Simple as that. That is the serious answer. Okay. End of story. Um, thank you, all three of you, for coming on tonight. Uh, guys, make sure you subscribe to both Steve McRae down there and Team Skeptic. Um, even though he's shown his face, you should probably still subscribe to him. Uh, I want to thank everyone for watching. Thank you very much for the super chats. Um, I'm having a premiere of my new video in about 15 minutes, so make sure you stick around for that. Um, uh, apart from that, tomorrow, Team and Steve are both streaming, so make sure you tune in for that. But for now, guys, remember, stupidity is not a right. Fight the flat earth. Fight the flat. Fight the flat. Fight the flat. Fight the fight. Fight the flat. Fight the flat. Fight the 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 F